It is a nation on an ambitious journey of development. It is one of the top performing in oil African economies. One of the world's rising economy. This is Ethiopia, the African tiger. Agriculture is the oldest sector in Ethiopia. More than 80% of the country's population has been engaged in this sector of the economy. The country has also huge agriculture potential due to its vast fertile land, diverse climate, adequate rainfall, and a large labor force. Ethiopia is endowed with huge livestock resource, uh, and especially because of the uh, diverse agroecology we have and also uh, diverse climate, we have different type of uh, species of animals. We have also different breeds within species. We have also premium quality raw materials like coffee, the best coffee, coffee arabica, sesame, and the potential in livestock, we are of course leading in Africa. We have the honey potential leading, spicy leading, fruit and vegetable also potential in the country. Despite its potential, Ethiopia has been benefiting less from the sector. The agriculture sector is mainly attributed to the traditional production system and limited or no value addition on the exported agricultural products. We are underutilizing the sector. Uh, given we have you know, all these potentials, uh, today Ethiopia is uh, earning its foreign exchange from primary and processed commodities. More than 75% of the agriculture output of Ethiopia is exported or domestically consumed with very little processing or value addition. What does that mean? Well, essentially it means, for example, in the case of coffee. Most of the coffee we produced, as well as most of the sesame we produce, is grown here processed to a minimal degree, cleaning, grading, and bagging into very large bags, 100 kilos or more, and exported. We, we import some of the food items. We import uh, oil, food oil, you know, like palm oil. We import wheat, you know, wheat products. So this shows that given, uh, despite the potential we have in the country, still we are importing. When we export raw material, you don't benefit. Even when you export finished leather, the benefit is limited. We have to convert that to shoes, garments, and bags. Agro-processing is important in our case because uh, for two reasons. One, uh, is that will create opportunity to process uh, what farmers are producing, and then you can market it. Uh, the other thing is agro-processing is important because the agro-processing industries will produce inputs for our livestock production. For the country to be able to achieve structural transformation, there is a need for uh, manufacturing industry to play a key role. To get the best out of the untapped potential of agricultural sector, the government has been undertaking several actions. The luring incentive the country has put in place is a case in point. Today there are lots of local and foreign investors in agro-processing, especially in textile, leather and leather products, foods and breweries and other subsectors. I trust 10 years ago to Ethiopia and Ethiopian government and Ethiopian population. Really, Ethiopia like my second country, and uh, I trust the country. I invest in a very big factory in, in the country, and today almost we have 7,500 family members in the compound. And really, this is, this is my life, you know, this is, I have big family. And uh, when uh, we came opportunity site and first 
investor need to trust country. I trust to country. I trust to country people. And really, really, uh, yeah, we have some opportunity, but more than important, and respect country and government policy and people culture. We respect already, and we get successful in the country. Uh, Ethiopia is one of the, uh, the top destination for investment. You know, we, very attractive because the fundamentals are there. Very uh, stable government, uh, and we have a, a double sheet uh, grows consistently, and we have also uh, population market. Uh, not only population is growing, market uh, income is also growing. I'll tell you the story of. Uh what happened about 12 years ago when I was invited to speak on a program called TEDx. And there were a lot of young women and men in the room who were worried about finding jobs and what should they do in agriculture, what could they do in Ethiopia. There were a lot of obstacles, there were not many opportunities. So I spoke about turning dirt into gold. Uh, and what that is about is the, the gold we have in Ethiopia is the soil of the land, the land that we live on. And the productivity and production of farmers in Ethiopia, millions of farmers. And what does that tell you? All of the crops that the farmers produce present an opportunity and a challenge for transformation. So I spoke about a very simple matter called turning peanuts into peanut butter. At that time, what I used to find on the uh, shelves of the markets in Addis were imported peanut butter in, in small jars. While we have farmers who are producing peanuts, and so we even went on the internet with some of the young women and men, and we looked at what would it take to transform a kilo of peanuts into a 150 milliliter peanut butter jar. It was an investment that was very small. It would cost less than the cars that they were driving. And many of them were excited. Today I'm happy to tell you, and I'm not gonna take credit for what happened, but today there are over 10 to 15 Ethiopian young women and men who are producing peanut butter for the local markets. You can go in every supermarket in Addis and you will find fresh, locally made, high quality peanut butter without a lot of chemicals and pesticides. Textile business has shown boom over the past years. The Indians, Chinese, Turkish, and investors of many different countries have been doing textile business in Ethiopia. Aika Addis is one of the Turkish investments here in Ethiopia. It started operating in the country 10 years ago. Textile business, very correct business for Ethiopia. Why? We have big uh, young population and really uh, this for example, garment industry. And today, our government, uh, they give decided would think about industry punk. And for example, all industry punk, they give support to garment industry. For example, garment, uh, they need only people, you know? And investment not big, but they can, they need too much people. For example, in garment, we have almost 4,000 people, but another old factory, we have almost 3,000 people. The leather and leather products sector is also flourishing. Institutions have been established to strengthen the textile and leather sectors. Two factories are flourishing uh, or being upgraded. Uh, the Japanese are investing, well, even in the Malaysia factory, there's two coming up. One is already completed, there's another one coming. We have huge uh, foreign companies coming to Ethiopia, uh, like uh, George Shu, H1, New Inc. And uh, 
Samar on their Indian companies. There are government uh, preparations going on to make this industry uh, because there is a government support. Uh, we have established already institutions, support institutions like uh, the Laser Industry Development Institute, which is called LIDI, and the Ethiopian Textile Institute, ETIDI, have been established to support this industry. In horticulture, you have a limited space for adding value. And in the horticulture crops that I decided to focus on were the kind of crops that you can do a minimal amount of processing in Ethiopia, package it, label it, and deliver it fresh. So freshness is part of the agro-processing that we do. The second part of it is the packaging and the way it's presented. Typically, you'd see fresh vegetables um, pre presented in very large quantities. We take that down and put it in smaller quantities because the modern consumer and the supermarkets want it in a quantity that the customer can say, I only need 150 grams of fresh vegetables today. I'll buy more tomorrow. It's good for me because I can sell more tomorrow, but I have to deliver it fresh. In Ethiopia, there are many enabling investment environments. The government provides several incentives to investors who aspire to specially engage in the manufacturing sector. These incentives include access to land, exemption of taxes from some important goods, and much more. Ten years ago, uh, Ethiopian government gave big support to us. They give this land to us after we start construction and uh, we start bring so many high quality machines from Europe. If ICA gets successful, they want to come to Ethiopia. Also, I invite to them to, uh, uh, to they come to Ethiopia, they invest in Ethiopia. Today, in Africa, Ethiopia, very successful country, very safe country, and very trusted country. Also, our government stable, and really we have a very, very good relation, all government, also all population. Initially, the government has described uh, some very robust incentives to uh, bring in investors to get this thing started. Uh, I will tell you, if, if you remember, how the flower industry started in Ethiopia. The incentives that were given were modified over time, and the government learned, and the private sector learned what kind of incentives work best. So this is the same thing with the agro-industry park. There are some new base incentives that are out there, such as access to finance, uh, turnkey solutions in the sheds, uh, access to uh, regulations that allow you to do things that heretofore used to be bureaucratic and difficult. And there will be other incentives. The government is very much committed to attack and support it. Other thing to be mentioned in this regard, there is no corruption, grand corruption. Ethiopia is planning to be a leading light manufacturing hub in Africa. To realize this vision, the country has been undertaking several national groundbreaking moves. One of such actions is the construction of agro-industrial parks in different parts of the country. The constructions of Bole Lemmi and Hawassa industrial parks have been already completed. At this good opportunity for investors. You know, first uh, they came country, they want to find land, they want to uh, make construction, and they, they lost the time. And today government take responsibility, government finish construction, and they give, like, uh, they give rent to them easily, and they can only bring their machine, they can start easily in the country. This is a very, very good, good way big opportunity for investors. There are lessons you learn from the rollout of the industrial parks. Uh, it's very attractive to investors uh, as long as it's priced competitively. And secondly, the amenities, meaning the facilities like infrastructure, roads, telecommunications, uh, electricity, etc., 
and availability of labor. Critical elements that make this successful. The existing industrial parks are examples of how this can work and agro-industry can take advantage of that very similar uh, setup. We have identified the commodities that could be incorporated in the industrial parks, in the different industrial parks. Once we identify the commodities, pot potential commodities there, we are now trying to assess to address those commodities in the area because we have different extension programs, we have different interventions like the genetic improvement, feed, health and in marketing infrastructure. Then we concentrate our efforts around those areas so that the, the potential could be exploited. Farmers will benefit from the potential that they have. Many more are also planned to be constructed in different parts of the country. The industrial parks help avoid bureaucracy and minimize the time and energy the investors waste in the process of building their own investment facilities. If you invest in Ethiopia, you're encouraged to just get into your business. The Makale Industrial Park is under construction now after completing the design and other preparations. Kombolcha Industrial Park is already started. Uh, Adama Industrial Park is uh, about to start construction. Uh, Dredawa Industrial Park is almost, you know, completely has completed the design and is going to start construction. So we have these four or five parks now under construction. We have secured the fund, necessary fund and we have also selected the consultants. Uh, currently, mm, we are targeting those uh, agro-industry parks, especially the, uh, the four agro-industry parks that are now going to be, uh, that are now under construction. Uh, we are trying to assess uh, what opportunities do exist in those areas and what interventions that we can do in order to supply the agro-processing industries uh, that are coming in terms of uh, production uh, in volume and also in quality. Ethiopia has over 3 million hectares of agricultural land suitable to grow cotton. It is a country endowed with a suitable climate and fertile soil. Anything can grow in Ethiopia. The country has also a huge livestock population in Africa. These factors show that Ethiopia has a huge raw material base for agro-processing business. The raw material base is uh, very critical for the manufacturing industry to grow. Be it uh, leather, be it uh, textiles, uh, let it be it also uh, agro-processing because these are the raw material base is very important. We need to like sustainable uh, cotton agricultural place in the country. For example, uh, today cotton not enough for industry, but every year cotton increase in the country. Considering this government is working heavily in attracting investors in raw material production, for example, in cotton production. Uh, and we are also trying to make land available to potential investors and provide incentives so that they produce uh, the raw material, the cotton, to the requirement of, uh, of the uh, buyers. Three years ago, I invite Cotton Made in Africa project to Ethiopia. I give big support. Already they came three years ago and they start Metama, first Metama Union. Today another four, four cooperative also, four union also joined this project. And today this Cotton Made in Africa project very successful running in the country. Also I bought cotton from them. I use uh, my factory. I make 100% export to Europe and Japan. The availability of raw materials is not the only thing that foreign and local investors enjoy in Ethiopia. Any investor hoping to invest in agro-processing subsector 
can also enjoy abundant, competitive young labor force. Uh, if you see our population structure at the moment, uh, the population at the age of 30 is about 70 percent, you know. So the country is very young, and people call it this, uh, the demographic dividend, you know. Uh, young population, so it is an asset for the country. Most of these young women and men have incredible capacity of ingenuity, they're hungry, they're willing, and companies who take advantage of having this labor force will have an advantage in the marketplace because this young labor force will come up with ingenious ideas to improve the business. This is, this is a very important thing to know. This is not an older, uh, you know, uh, experienced labor force. It's a young, energetic labor force that can contribute greatly to the success of many companies. The government is also focusing on human resource development, in which 70% of the courses are uh, given in uh, engineering and science. This also contributes and uh, preparing our human resources for the development of uh, these two industries. Ethiopia has been engaged in the construction of road, telecommunication and power projects over the last two decades. These infrastructures have been enhancing investment activities in the country by facilitating smooth transportation of export commodities to the port and important goods to investment destinations. Government is heavily investing in infrastructure. More than any other country, Ethiopia is a country that is investing 60% of its budget on infrastructure. No comparable country, even rich African countries, don't do this because this goes to the commitment of the government. I am happy and this Djibouti Addis Ababa rail, railway already finished. And this is big support to industry. Also in city, this is very successful project, metro system. Today our people use metro system, they easily come to factory. Remember, we have probably double the number of kilometers of roads than 10, 15 years ago. So if you look at that trajectory as an investor, you say, you know what, this is a place I want to go to because even if I have to be 200, 300 kilometers, 600 kilometers outside Addis, I can still meet the needs of that growing consumer community marketplace in Ethiopia. And now with the railroad, and the airport, and, and a, a phenomenal thing that has happened that Ethiopian Airlines has become a huge cargo company. And now you can export very perishable goods. You can export ice cream or even milk from Ethiopia to another country. Also, we are investing in power. That has made in the green power also, hydropower, solar power, wind power, these are green and also it is very cheap. The cheapest power rate is in Ethiopia. It is on the range of uh, three to four uh, US cents per kilowatt hour, while it is tw over 20 in many African countries. I hope and we can make billion dollar export only for garment side. And this is very important business for Ethiopia. I invite every time foreign investor to Ethiopia. Agroprocessing is a profitable business. Uh, so uh, I encourage both domestic and especially domestic to invest in agroprocessing. Uh, so that you know they benefit themselves and also they benefit the, the producers. Uh, even for foreign investors, they can this business is very profitable and uh, because government is providing those facilities, infrastructures, uh, then uh, that would simplify, you know, uh, simplify everything. This is Ethiopia. 
In months raw material base, competitive young labor force, proximity to the international markets, and ever-growing infrastructures are just some of the reasons why you as an investor or business partner should seriously consider Ethiopia for your agro-processing business. Come and explore Ethiopia even more. It's a land of opportunities, a land where history is in the